This episode of PodCap is brought to you by Smogon.com. Unfortunate doesn't begin to describe people who aren't on Smogon.com who want to learn how to play competitive Pokemon. It's free to sign up, and there's plenty of opportunities to get good. Join today. This episode is also brought to you by the Create a Pokemon Discord server. Ever wanted to be faked out by Burkle announcing results like 20 minutes before they're actually going to be revealed? Well, now you can have it anytime you want! But that only happens if you join the Create a Pokemon Discord server. And now, our feature presentation. Enjoy. Alright, hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode of PodCap. Today I'm joined by three wonderful users in the CAP user forum, and we are going to be talking about CAP29's concepts. Now, today I'm first joined by uh, the stats leader for the project, Too Spoopy For You. Hello. Uh, the typing leader and the concept winner, QZL. Hello. And the most handsomest person in all of Smogon, <laughs> Lord Rabia. Big facts. Anyway, so today we're going to be talking about a bunch of the concepts for Cap 29 since the poll for that just wrapped up. Uh, and like I said, we have the uh, concept winner here today uh, as one of our guests, uh, QZL's uh, concept, Defective Ability. And I figure we might as well just start right off with that, QZL. Sort of, where did this inspiration for this concept come from? So, frankly, a lot of it has been my experiences playing NU and using stuff like Archeops, which, as you may or may not know, has the ability Defeatist, which takes a mon that, whose stat spread suggests that it's just a nuclear wall breaker with basically no answers, you know, 140 attack, 110 speed, and because of the ability Defeatist, it actually instead largely invested in bulk, or even ran bulkier sets such as acrobatics, knockoff, U-turn, roost kind of stuff, where having that bad ability completely transforms its playstyle and adds so much more depth over what would have just been I equip the choice band and I click buttons. Um, also playing a bit of ADVNU, which I know Rabia can probably get into a bit, uh, showed me Cacleon, which is a mon that definitely has bad stats and it's difficult to say how bad color change is but it really changes what threats it can check what threats it does check and how it plays and also gives a sort of back and forth between the Cacleon user and their opponent with the opponent being able to basically set up situations where they can guaranteed force the Cacleon out if they want to and that kind of complexity is, again, something I wanted to explore, especially considering we've never had a cap with anything less than a even mildly beneficial ability. I'm thinking of Nocturno, which it has Frisk, which is the worst ability we have, we have ever covered. Yeah, because I know with, uh, isn't it Kits with Frisk, actually? Uh, yeah. Kits got Frisk and Nocturno's got four more on uh, Nocturno. But those are the yeah. worst we've ever had, which are not bad at all. In fact, they're arguably benefits because you can use Nocturna to figure out what set someone's running, for example. Yeah, absolutely. And I know that, like, you mentioned with Rabia, too, you've got the experience with ADV and you. I know that there's a lot of interesting play style that you can have there that we really don't see in, you know, today's metagames, especially now, what, 10 years later compared to when ADV was first made? 15? No, yeah, more 15. like 15, but something else to keep in mind with ADV and you is it was not existent back when ADV was the main generation. I don't think it came into being until like middle of last decade, so it's hmm. still a relatively new meta, all things considered. Oh, so then there's plenty of uh, developing concepts there as well. Interesting. I'll be honest, I don't know ADV and you that much, but uh, oh, nice. it's exciting to see how those translate to Cap, for example. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult because I think there are some negative abilities that don't really have that much potential for exploration. For example, with Truant, literally all we could do is basically just give it U-turn and make a U-turn bot that can't ever click anything but U-turn, which is sort of boring. Or Truant, yeah. as we've seen done in every OM that allows entrainment plus Truant ever. Yeah, I think <laughs> just about every single other 
negative ability, quote unquote, has a lot of potential for just enabling very weird play patterns that we haven't seen mm-hmm. before, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think it's important to, uh, I know you list this in your questions to be answered in your concept cues, but like, how can we define a generally harmful ability? And I was wondering, you know, that metric, if you had a specific way to sort of define that. Um, my initial approach was definitely just basically saying, would you rather have illuminate a, an ability that does functionally nothing or the ability of choice on a generic mod? which I think is workable, but there's a couple issues with that. Um, there's no such thing as a generic mon. You, you can't have it. Um, it just doesn't exist. You can say, would Garchomp rather have Illuminate or a slow start? And that's obviously Illuminate, but for example, would Skarmory rather have Illuminate or Color Change? I don't know. Is Skarmory the right choice for that? I don't know again. Um, so I don't think that metric's perfect. I think if you want to define a generally bad ability, I think it's something where in the vast majority of your games, you will have to keep the ability in mind and play around its drawbacks more so than sure. its explicit upsides. Um, I think you could argue that Guerrilla Tactics fits in that definition, and uh, we all know Guerrilla Tactics is one of the best abilities in the game. But at the same time, I think having a slightly more broad definition that might include stuff that we don't want to cover is a lot better than just saying our only options are true and defeatist and slow start. So I'd prefer to definitely basically just take a very broad view of what a negative ability could be and then to explore those in detail during the ability stage rather than just having a very, very narrow uh, definition of what we could even cover. Absolutely. Uh, do either of you two, Rabia or Spoo, have any thoughts on that as well or anything you'd like to add? I've got a little bit regarding the whole double-edged ability conversation. Right, so most of it's around the idea of color change because I saw some people wanting to label it as just an objectively bad ability that negates whatever your base typing is and just leaves you kind of there, you know, like a fish out of water. And I think that's a very short-sighted way of looking at the ability that probably is only ever given out the perspective by people that have never used a Pokemon with color change in their life, which is probably 99 nine repeating percent of the player base. I mean, when I think of times Kecleon has actually been a viable Pokemon and had to use color change as the ability, it's what? Gen 3 NU? Maybe it's, is maybe a Gen 4 PU Kecleon's good? I don't know. <laughs> maybe some obscure Gen 5 meta? I don't know if it had Protean, though, at that point. Protean wasn't a thing till Gen 6, okay. so... So yeah, maybe yeah. in, like, Gen 5... Um, Sub zero used or something. I don't know. Maybe but I think in Gen Five uh, ZU no challenge cards among us. <laughs> My favorite meta. <laughs> but yeah, I think there's a lot more to color change that are like at first you would think of because you could put yourself in situations. This is something that happens in Gen Three and you a lot when running these bulky Kecleon sets, where you can cause some of these wall breakers a lot of hassle. Something like say Flareon which is reasonably difficult to switch into between Fire Blast, Hidden Power Grass, and what have you. You could switch into Fire Blast, and I was like, oh, I guess I gotta take another turn to change your typing again so I can actually hit you, or something like Wailord, where if you catch, catch it using Hydro Pump, yeah, I could still hit you with HP Grass. But that's a lot less threatening than being hit by a Hydro Pump again. And so right, I think... Yeah when addressing something like color change, it's real interesting to see, okay, well, how does the gameplay actually end up working? Maybe in current generations, color change would be a lot more of a, like, an objectively bad ability. It's hard to say because you just, you're never going to see it at this point. It's on one Pokemon, and that Pokemon has just an objectively better ability because you end up having control over what your typing is. And we've seen Kecleon leverage that control before in more recent metagames to you know, pretty much just scam people out of a super effective revenge kill, maybe. You know, maybe got something slower with Mach Punch, and then Kecleon decides to use Shadow Sneak and become a ghost type. You don't right. have that agency with color change, but I st- still view there's being a fairly high amount of agency back in metas where we've seen color change is actually relevant, and I think that it's a very interesting route. And I think it's there's a lot of worth in, like, let's look at Molt. 
like Moltres coverage, like it's, uh, let's say, Fire Blast plus Scorching Sands. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of worth in basically just saying, you can't hit me with your nuclear power stab, and you have to hit me with your significantly weaker coverage move, and right. that's very valuable. Absolutely. Because a super effective Scorching Sands is significantly weaker than a neutral Fire Blast. I'm not saying Moltres runs Fire Blast right now, it's just an example I had in my head. In general. Know. Yeah. Yeah. But basically, Color Change says this is, you know, sort of at worst, basically a 10% damage reduction. Because you're going from, like, let's say a high power stab to a moderately powerful, super effective coverage. A lot of the time, that's going to be a 10% damage reduction. I mean, when you're facing a, uh, a choice locked mon that resists itself, for example, Gorilla Boom, practically speaking, that second hit is going to do almost nothing and they have to switch out. And that's really cool, but also really bad, you know? So, yeah. I think it has a ton of depth that just hasn't been at all touched before. No, I was just going to say that I know when you and I were discussing concepts back even before the poll, one of the things that we really wanted to focus on was battle complexity and how can we make fights really, in or concepts that encourage mindful play. And I think with, especially when you talk about color change, that really forces both sides of the field to really consider their actions as they're doing them. And not just mindlessly click, okay, mindless click, bullet punch, mindless click, acrobatics, what have you, what have you, what have you. Um, so I'm I'm really excited by this concept. Uh, I'm really excited by this concept as well. I, I think there are a ton of cool opportunities here. I think there's a lot of others that offer similar complexity. Like, if you put slow start on a wall, suddenly, like, you know, if you put slow start on, let's say, Metagross, you know, suddenly you have an amazing physical wall that if you spend five turns with it successfully is a wall breaker and that kind of mm -hmm. in battle complexity is something that i could see like you stick your hypothetical like slow start metagross onto a stall team and you have this really good physical wall but also if you're facing an, an opponent who's just treating you like you're really passive you suddenly have a nuclear wall breaker you know Mm -hmm. And that kind of complexity that's offered by, for example, even slow start and ability that's traditionally thought of, you know, just Regigig is bad, is right. really cool. Because I don't think there's a single other way to really get that kind of complexity out of uh, seemingly defensive mon besides, like, I don't know, literally your concept of, like, let's st stick mm -hmm. Berserk on a, de on a defensive mon, you know? Yeah. And we'll come back to my concept in a little bit, because yeah. uh, that's also on the docket of conversations. But uh, one other question I wanted to ask all three of you sort of about this concept. I know we've talked about some abilities and everything, but what are some other initial ways you might envision this concept going forward into concept, concept assessment and even later down the line? Obviously, I know there's maybe a little concern for pull jumpiness here, but just, you know, in general, if you had to think about it. One of the current discussion topics Virgil has up is um, basically, should we have uh, skill swap in entrainment? And that's a very difficult question to answer because I think it's very dependent on the actual ability we have. I think skill swap is probably the worst way to treat this concept overall, just because it's basically saying, it's basically dodging the question. Instead of asking, how do we make a slow start mon viable? It's basically, we've made a How do we get rid of this start. really bad ability? Yeah. And that's probably like the lowest, uh, the least complex, the least interesting way to treat the concept. Entrainment, though, is a very different question, though. We've all seen like balanced hack mons with like entrainment Dragapult, which just, you know, is the dumbest mod of all time. And I think there's some lessons we can learn from that. And I also think it's probably the most dangerous way to go down this concept, especially if we end up with like normalized entrainment, which would just make the game sort of worse to play, <laughs> if we, especially if we give it right. to a ghost type. Yeah. <laughs> right. So that's one question that we definitely need to answer and is definitely super interesting. Mm -hmm. My favorite question I think right now, and this you know what, next, next pulls the abilities, we can talk about that. Or I'm giving the, the executive order we can. Um, <laughs> what kind of abilities do we consider double-edged beyond, like, say, color change? Because there are several that have noticeably great 
aspects to them, but also like still a negative to it. Right. Like one of them I just think of up, up top of the dome is dry skin. I don't think anyone's gonna call that a bad ability. Because I wouldn't just water because immunity, immunity, water healing is like really cool. But it's without a doubt still got drawbacks to it. I mean, you get absolutely blasted by, you know, an ember. You don't ever match into a sudden team with any amount of glee. And I do wonder if people will try to argue for some of these abilities that do still have discernible drawbacks to them as, like, pro-concept. I personally would say no, because I feel like at a certain point you have to s compare, like, benefits to neg benefits to um drawbacks and say, okay, how, like, heavily skewed are we in either direction? Especially it's if it's towards the bit of its direction. something worth discussing, especially in the ability stage, if only yeah. so that we can have a list of more than, like, seven abilities to talk about. Yeah, because I do think we run the risk of there being a somewhat small pool of abilities that fit yeah. the idea we're going for. Yeah. Yeah. I'd... And speaking of, speaking to abilities, too, I feel like one of those abilities you sort of mentioned, Rabia, that... It has net positives, but also has net negatives would be something like no guard, for example, where, you know, as you are obviously hitting all the moves you have, but your opponent's also hitting anything it wants on you. So that's another one of those abilities that is going to be, it could be a serious detriment to the Pokemon, but it could also be a really, really strong boon as well. Mon that is magma storm trap bait that literally cannot <laughs> dodge a magma storm. Yeah. <laughs> Pain. That no god is that because you're choosing your own moveset, I don't think it's really ever possible to have the risk of Lord Favor be against you. Because unless like you... Unless, like, a major part of your game plan is basically saying, I will switch into Tomahawk and dodge its hurricane, I don't think No Guard is ever really a net negative the way that a lot of other abilities could be. For example, that like. That might be on a level of interactions with other mons that is just yeah. not too feasibly done during the creation stage. Right. Like, Weak Armor is probably the peak, like, double edged ability, you know? And. I think weak armor is arguably good. We've seen multiple ones that choose specifically to have weak armor when they have otherwise neutral abilities. But at the same time, I think it has enough drawbacks and your opponent has enough control over it that it counts here in a way that no god doesn't because, you know, no god is literally just saying that I lose to Tomahawk, you know? <laughs> and we can achieve losing to Tomahawk in a lot of different ways. But yeah, I'm very interested to see exactly what definition we use for a ability that counts for this project and the ability stage in general is going to really define a lot of the rest of the project especially like do we want to give a secondary ability which my immediate response to is no because i kind of am interested in making sure that this cap is forced to play with whatever dog ass ability it's assigned <laughs> right it seems to go against the whole point of the cap to like say, hey, we're going to give it a second ability, which is like not as bad. We're giving like it a the, useless the ability point. like Runaway. And it's like, well, right. okay, now we're not seeing this interaction anymore. I could right. see like giving it like Defeatist in Klutz or something. Mm -hmm. If and only if it's already Stealth Rock Week. <laughs> right. But yeah. Yeah. I'd be, I'd be curious to see how we can make Klutz work, though. I think that would be really neat. I think Klutz, Klutz is, is one really of the few easy ways. to make work. Yeah. Yeah. I think Klutz also basically asks the question is the only way we have remaining basically how do we make a mom that's four times weak to stealth rock work? I mean, we've also seen, like, I've run this in current NU Trick Scarf Golurk. Yeah. Like, the idea of a trick mod with Klutz isn't anything new because, you know, the long fabled only viable Lopany set, Trick AV. <laughs> but I mean it's something to consider I think Klutz is one of those abilities that has a kind of defined way that you make it work at this point and so I'm unsure just how quote unquote interesting as people like to you know yeah. label concepts they don't like or ideas that mm -hmm. that would really be I think with Klutz you'd probably just want to ban Trick that could also work. That could work. Yeah. I think yeah. Klutz is way more away. interesting when you're basically asking how much does an item matter rather than 
oh no, I gave the tomahawk a sticky bob. Yeah, I think we'd kind of just be pigeonholing ourselves if we didn't ban trick, because, like, that's such an obviously effective route. Like, why wouldn't we do that? Oh no, the Equilibra now has a uh, flame orb. Yeah. Oopsie doopsie. Hmm. We can ban trick, but switcheroo, that guy stays. (laughs) Fling, that's staying. If yeah. we want to engineer, like honestly, if we want to run clutch and we want to engineer a way to give someone an item, like let's make a mon that uses knockoff and bestow. <laughs> That'd be a fun. Idea. <laughs> I don't even remember what bestow does. Use it, it just cast its item. item. Oh. <laughs> if they don't have an item, they get your item. You know. Oh man. Like, you go. Well, like, this would most certainly be unviable, but yet I still want to see it. Done. Yeah. Out. We gotta do You're it. You're a clutch mon, <laughs> and you have knockoff. But you don't get All tricks, right. so your way to do it is you knock them off, and then they hit you, and then they get Sticky Bob. <laughs> I love that. Next Flash Cap concept has been decided there on. There we go. GG. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> the next Flash Cap concept is just, like, make the stupidest interaction of all time. Make something that's totally unviable, yet what are we doing? But it makes you feel really cool if you manage to get it to work. That would be a right. fun flash cap. It's, it's the YouTube concept, as it were. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work 99% of the time, but when you're doing it for YouTube, you're going to make it happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, uh, why don't we move on from the winner, and let's talk about some of the other uh, concepts that made it to that final slate. Uh, and we'll start actually with Spoo's. Spoo's uh, concept, Bulletproof Glass, took second place in the poll. Uh, Spoo, do you want to talk a little bit about your concept? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, so it's it's actually not my concept. It was originally submitted by a user named um, Kurtasaris. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, during Kerfluffle's um, process. And I was like looking back through old concept submissions to try and find some inspiration for what I was going to submit. And I ended up just thinking that was like a very inspired idea. So, um, you know, I wrote... I tried to rewrite it a little bit, uh, put my own spin on things, I guess. Um, and that's what I ended up submitting. And it did really well. It got me to second place. So, um, Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I especially liked the idea of, like, you know, with typing in particular, typing is always such an interesting right. way to approach things. And in CAP, we always seem to have this fascination with making things four times a week to ground. <laughs> uh, so I... I do admit this one was really fascinating, at least to me, just because I saw a lot of really cool ways we could have, like, done the process itself. So I thought that that was really, really neat. Like, and with mediocre defensive stats, too, it would be, like, extra crucial that we really think about how we're making the Pokemon. Yeah, definitely. Um, Yeah, I thought there were a ton of, like, really interesting routes. Um, And at the same time, like, a whole lot of people were submitting concepts that were, like, um, I mean, shoot, Quanis was literally like break the cap mold, like do something that cap doesn't do, and I feel like mm. um, this concept also kind of embodies that in a very similar way, because it's like let's not make um, you know, a fast, bulky, offensive mon that has perfect good stats, and let's make like <laughs> something defensive for once, like just kind of um, you know, making an end product that would be relatively unique for us. Absolutely, yeah. And again, we think about the past, heck, even going all the way back, I can't even think of, like, going all the way back something that was, like, made with defense in mind. Because yeah. obviously, like, Astro's got uh, special defense sets now because Astro. Um, <laughs> we did not see that one like, coming. <laughs> no, we didn't. Uh, but, like, even with Libra, it was primarily designed with... Uh, offense in mind and then like you go back to the starters and the only one that's really thought about that was the way that the the tl pigeonholed okay the water one is going to be defensive yeah (laughs) and like you know before that i mean what is it right like jambao is designed for offense molex i guess designed molex maybe yeah yeah diamond pearl that was yeah some of the early ones actually like, Noticing a pattern here with concepts not ending up used how they were supposed to. Hmm. <laughs> Cap. Very interesting. Cap, Cap really likes to be safe with how it designs its mons. Um, yeah. We can just look at Astralodal and Equilibra, which are the safest mons that have ever existed in the world. Yeah. Um, Tomahawk as well. 
Dude, yeah. Tomahawk. Oh my god. And let's be honest, reasonably fast tank is probably the safest mold that you can ever make for Emon. It's just like, I have good mm. defenses, I hit sort of hard, and I'm sort of fast, and I have a good ability. And it I have was good Spoopy's timing. concept, I saw something like that, except it said, okay, how about we take reasonably fast and crank it up 10,000 times and make it nuclearly <laughs> fast. Well, and I thought that was a very fun take. I think I think for a Spoo's concept, like, Mega Jumpluff would have been a super cool way to do it. Mega Jumpluff. <laughs> <laughs> Mega Jumpluff. Bring Jumpluff back. That mod is so fun Bro, and old. Bro, I love Jumpluff. You. It's the most fun mod, fun mod like, ever to use. Mm. It's, oh, God. You have to think so hard when you're playing it. <laughs> Please give me the ADV and you sets for Jumpluff, and I will actually play that meta. He's not ADV? in ADV. Oh, He's damn in it. DPP, though. DPP and you? Yeah. No, it was in. It was, I think it's in ADV. Probably UU. UU. Yeah. It's definitely not an NU, though. I'm just thinking, right. like, the uh, PU set, which is just, like, uh, I'll paste it in the call. It's just, like, Strength Sap. Uh, SD. Oh, God. And it's just, like, this weird hybrid of wall with surprising it's a beautiful weird type. Set. That is weird as hell. It's a beautiful set. Okay, so for the oh listeners, it is a jump bluff with infiltrator, uh, max attacks, max speed, jolly, and it's got swords dance, strength sap, sleep powder, and acrobatics. This is what it's the itemless. ideal Pokemon looks like. You may not and like it, just, but it is what it is. This weird hybrid <laughs> of wincon support and wall, and it just doesn't make any sense at all. Jump but that'll be cool. my cap 30 submission pokemon that does three different roles all at once yeah you you figure figure it out. i will say has there ever been a concept that has like made it far along in the process where it's like this pokemon functions best without an item i don't think so and that's like one of the things that makes me interested in klutz for this concept just like you know mm -hmm. um that's a uh, yes, but your concept's just very interesting because traditionally, let's be honest, caps have good defensive typings and they also have good defensive stats. Um, yeah. Equilibra, for example. <laughs> I think Astrolabo's pretty close to... It's actually pretty close to your concept, though, in practice. Yeah, I think Astrolotl, um I mean, I even mentioned it explicitly in one of my questions because it's like, how do we not just become Astrolotl the sequel? Um, yeah. Pokemon such as Astrolotl, Landorus, Therian, and Hydreigon often fulfill roles that are simultaneously offensive and defensive in nature. What's the ratio of that? Yeah, Yeah, because I feel like Astrolotl's definitely more like, you know, like 60-40 offensive to defensive. And ideally we'd right. be skewed the opposite way of being like more defensive and like living offensive hits than like sure. dishing them out ourselves. Um, and Astrolotl was designed to be specifically offensive team support. Yeah, exactly. So like yes of course it's going to have that offensive presence but it was designed to be defensive in some way as well so yeah for sure for and sure. supportive yeah and everything else and a trickster cleric mm -hmm. the concept With formerly wish. known as trickster <laughs> cleric <laughs> <sighs> all right and then the other one that made it uh the other concept that made it to the final slate the second slate was my concept limit break um and i'll give a quick spiel about it uh, basically, uh, I've been on this Final Fantasy VII binge slash kick slash whatever, what have you, and one of the interesting, uh, mechanics in that game is that after your character takes a certain amount of, like, hits, not damage, but hits, it gets this one-time super powerful attack, and then that power meter resets back to zero and you have to build it up again. So when I was designing this concept, initially it was power meter, where... In order to be effective, you have to boost up to get your damage, and then it sort of goes back down. So it would have been something that, you know, uses, like, overheat, and then you have to use Nasty Plot or something, or, you know, superpower plus bulk up. And I thought that that was interesting, but then after talking to Qs a bit, um, I realized that this idea of taking damage was more what I wanted to focus on, and less on the power meter. And that eventually became uh, the concept Limit Break, which was basically how do we incentivize a Pokemon to take damage in a fight? Um, and the idea is um, with this taking damage, they get some kind of boost later on. 
And I wanted to narrow the concept down at least a little bit there so that, you know, it's not just, oh, how do we incentivize taking damage? Oh, easy. We just use, uh, like, uh, Endeavor, Focus Slash Endeavor, you know? It was, like, specifically taking hits from the opponent to get some kind of boost and uh, seeing where we could go from there. And there were a lot of different paths, but that was kind of where I was inspired by and I know that there was some discussion there about different ways in which the process could have gone. Yeah, I voted years for first place when it was the top three. Because stamina body press is just my favorite combination. It's and yeah. so dumb, you definitely so... <laughs> pro-concept. It is absolutely pro-concept. Be the concept. Yeah. And I really... Yeah. Vol- go for it, go for it. One thing I think was interesting with yours is basically just... A lot of these abilities, again, are, let's be honest, yours was ability-focused as well, Mm -hmm. um, because a lot of the easier ways to sort of actualize taking damage are ability-focused, but I think it's super interesting to sort of explore, like, exactly how strong are these abilities, because the vast majority of them haven't had high-tier play. Stamina's on Mudsdale, you know? Mudsdale is, uh, I mean, it's appeared in UU, you know? Right, it's appeared and in Ubers as well. Oh, I used it there. <laughs> and I think stamina is clearly like one of the better abilities in the game, honestly. Absolutely. Yeah. It's absurd, let's be honest. But yeah. there's also stuff like, you know, Moltres Galar gets Berserk, and um, personally I've used that in Cap, and it's strong, but Moltres Galar is a very bad user of the ability Berserk. It's, it's really bad, because... Berserk is at its strongest, you know, when you're taking damage, you're healing up, you're taking damage, you're healing up, until you get to the point where you can just one-hit them, you know? Moltres Galar is horrible at that. So, <laughs> sort of trying to figure out, using the data we have from Moltres Galar, how strong is is Berserk? Like, if we choose Berserk, how much power do we have re- left for the rest of the concept? And that's very unclear. And then there's stuff like Weak Armor, which is on uh, Oromoth. And we all love the weak armor weakness policy or moth set. But, like, is that the optimal way to use weak armor? I don't know. With respect to Berserk, this is obviously the only example that I'm going to have much usage with, but Drampa, we've seen how that can be a pretty good user of the ability because it's actually got reliable recovery, a pretty yeah, coherent like the... defensive typing as well. It can set up with other means as well to bolster its bulk with like Calm Mind Berserk being a pretty reasonable mm-hmm. like not win con really but like kind of like Growth Vile Plume probably would be the best example I can think of because those it just breaks, breaks open Vile games Plume is so dumb, maybe, yeah. <laughs> it would be the ideal concept <laughs> <all right? laughs> yeah but yeah um I think I think that your concept is also very cool for basically exploring the kind of this is a definitely a wall, but if your opponent just gives it too much time alone, it will just win game. Right. And those are some of the most interesting mods for me, just because you could sort of flex between the two playstyles. And yeah, and one of the things again, a ton of in-game complexity, which we spoke about earlier. Right. One of the things actually that I just thought about in this podcast itself is, you know, if I hadn't specifically specified that, specifically specified, if I hadn't specified that it needs to take damage to get a boost, that slow start concept of a slow start wall converting into a wall breaker would have been almost perfect for this in a way. And I think, I think a concept that I might try to submit down the line is something that exactly like the longer it's on the field, the better it becomes, you know? Something like that. Obviously, that that takes a lot of, you know, refining and everything. And, you know, this is just spitballing now. But I think that that's a really fascinating idea of, you know, we have the we had a concept earlier on in this process as well. That was like it's best functioning when it's in the first like two turns of it being on field. And then afterwards, it's not nearly as effective. And that would be like the reverse of it. So I think that's a concept I might look into for future topics. (laughs) Um, Speaking of other concepts unless there were any other thoughts on um my one as well we could also talk about rabia's concept a little bit uh boxing gloves right so this concept's gotten me fourth place two times in a row so (laughs) i don't know whether to be impressed or really depressed about that like a little bit of both 
but yeah, so the idea of my concept was to look at how typing affects the ability of a Pokemon to be like good offensively. Because we've seen... Th this is not exactly an underexplored concept. Because we've seen Pokemon like Scizor, Steel Bug, not good offensively. Melmetal, just Steel, not good offensively. Rillaboom, Mono Grass, not good offensively. But I think there's a lot of ways that you can still take that route and see, okay, how do we deal with a wall breaker that just does not have the immediate tools via typing to pose a great threat? Because a lot of the time when you're looking at wall breakers, things that are going to pop out to you are super reliable, strong stab moves. I mean, if I think of other good breakers in OU, I can think of what, like, Cinder Ace fires a pretty good offensive typing. You got... I mean, you got stab on everything, but you got yeah. stab pyro ball. Fighting's a pretty good offensive typing. You, know, you got like, bugs a pretty good offensive typing. Yeah. Spectre is a really fun one because you got just ghost moves, but ghost is one of the best offensive typings of the game ever since, really forever, but Gen Six especially when they made Steel no longer resistant to it, and right. something you could look at as well. Dragapult, Ghost Dragon, those are two really great offensive typings. But one mm -hmm. of the common themes among all of these is, I, I guess maybe an uncommon theme, is how differently a lot of these Pokemon are able to optimize that great offensive typing. Or in the case of the bad ones, that poor offensive typing. And we could even Absolutely. look back at older Pokemon that were able to achieve this same idea. The one that I always think of and that would be probably the like picture, what, what's it called? Poster boy, poster child. Would yeah. be like ADV Snorlax with Choice Band. Which, right. despite, you know, normal, not a great offensive typing, one of the best mons in the tier, one of the best breakers, because several reasons. One of them being base, what, 400 power self-destruct or something? I think it was that strong. isn't it? I think Boom is 500, but 500, self-destruct's yeah. 400. But yeah. That's right. I think there are a... Yeah, go on. Uh, one of the things I found interesting about yours is there's a lot of very interesting attacks in these bad defensive type, offensive typings, which are just completely ignored. Um, Venna Shock is cool as hell, you know, but it's never been used. There's a large variety of ways that this has already been done, and there is a mm -hmm. significant, or a similarly large amount of ways that this kind of idea hasn't been done. And I feel like directly exploring the other methods is equally as interesting as maybe even just looking at ones that we've seen done in older generations and maybe try to revive in the now. Yeah. I mean, exploring why, like, how we could make a viable boom user in post-nerf uh, territory would be super cool. It is. I feel you know, like that would default to just suicide lead, and so you'd have to be really careful <laughs> yeah, in the early stages thinking, to like, make along sure Along the lines of, there. you know, ADV lacks where... Boom is just your way to surprisingly get past a wall that you really shouldn't have a way to get past. Because, you know. There was a whole mm -hmm. concept about that, like self KOing moves. Yeah. 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 I think that, I was, that was also a cool concept. It was concept. interesting, yeah. It was good. If I may, before we move on to that one, if we want to, I was just going to say with Rabia's concept, uh, too. Um, it reminds me in a way of how Crucy's concept worked, where it has a really bad defensive typing, but like in a way you like it's still interesting because rock and poison are both interesting oh, yeah, no, stabs. Terribly bad offensively as well. Yeah. But it turns out when you give a Pokemon regenerator slash magic card a whole bunch of coverage, a whole bunch of speed, then it makes it still really good. Yeah, just recoil as head smash off of a nuclear attack stat turns out to uh, compensate for a whole lot. <laughs> yeah, That's and we won't impressive. we won't dive down that rabbit hole of oh what we could have done with Crucible <laughs> instead. But <laughs> I will just say that I feel like Reckless would have been a lot more fun than Magic Guard, but that was a while back and yeah. Yeah. can't really do much about it now. Yeah, I mean we've um, all we've all been playing a lot of Gen Six, um, and Crucy is just <laughs> insane. Crucible <laughs> makes me want to just like. Close my eyes and forget this metagame exists. A very fair Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, we were mentioning the self-KOing concept. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that one's real fun because just beyond self-destruct explosion, even Misty explosion, if that somehow weaseled its way in there, just the idea of recoil moves is also a pretty interesting one because we've seen... Or Ga Game Freak, Nintendo, whoever the hell makes this stuff... 
they've also got, you know, two abilities that are very much defined around recoil. You got Reckless to say, okay, I'm going to KO myself even more quickly, but you're going down with me. And he also got Rockhead to say, okay, I'm going to keep using these moves in front of you. I'm not going to ever take damage from them. What do you want to do about it? And so I feel like there'd be a very interesting line in the sand drawn with the idea of recoil moves in mind if you wanted to go beyond the directly self-KO moves. It'd be a very interesting to see if, you know, one of those paths is chosen or if maybe they t do both. That could have been interesting. I have two thoughts about this one as well. Um, the first being Healing Wish's new mechanics I thoroughly enjoy using so much. Uh, just because with Healing Wish, for those who don't know, um, all you do is if you click Healing Wish and then switch something in that's got full health, it won't get the Wish until you switch in something that's actually had damage on it, which I love doing in fights. It's such a cool flex. Um, so there's that. But the other one I was thinking of is the way that uh, Cursula has Parish Body, and it effectively allows you to be kind of a suicide lead if you want, but it also works really well in hyper offense since you can it's just not then that interesting. Yeah, you can uh you can effectively do a fuck ton of damage and then die and send something in when you die for like a near free switch in. And I think it's really interesting to uh see how that would work as well in a concept such as Memento Mori by Binnacle is the best. Come on, I've been very interested in Parish Body on a Pokemon that just was not deathly slow yeah. and deathly frail on at least, you know, one end of it all. Yeah. Something Parish Body more is well something I suspect is cool. really strong, but we have never seen work. I mean, you could yeah. probably argue it for the current concept. You probably could, honestly. Yeah, maybe, like maybe. Later. But yeah, Memento Mori is a really cool concept. Yeah, it didn't get a ton of discussion, but yeah, it's it's really neat. I I think it's a teensy bit narrow just because practically explosion is the way to go for it. Yeah. Unless you want to go with like a misty explosion, which is significantly worse. And I my fear is that probably the coolest way to use explosion that is to basically make an impromptu mixed attacker doesn't work post nerf especially like you know adv explosion was ridiculous because it just ended the turn after you used it which was really stupid i feel like you'd need stab on explosion nowadays if you wanted to do something entirely based around the move because otherwise yeah. i feel you're just not gonna get that damage that you want unless you I choose mean, the nuclear option of base 180 attack mon with boom I mean, I think something like uh, Urshifu could definitely use Explosion. Yeah, be really solid at luring out the Clefables and saying, okay, yeah. good night. Yep. He's basically, <laughs> any Mon where you have a specific hole in your coverage that you, can't, that you can technically cover otherwise, but you can't really, that also has like that 130 attack, would definitely use Explosion. Um... I would also be interested to see if like we could use the eight abilities. That would be interesting because, you know, I think back to Mega Glalie with uh, Refrigerate mm -hmm. and Explosion and how like that whole thing, half the time you were literally using Mega Glalie to explode. I think That's it can be used for it even nowadays in June 7 and you. Oh, it's good for it. <laughs> how much does it do to Skarmory? I remember it doing like a terrifying amount my guess is 70 time for a calc 92. time to run some calcs oh my god wow. blast wow that is a lot <laughs> it turns out adding stab on top of stab is pretty good for and don't forget the 1.2 times boost indeed to a yeah it's yeah, crazy that's, man i just that's think crazy we, Explosion is super cool just because that one-time hit that basically just says even resists are taking 50% on the right mon is super cool, but you'd have to have a lot of care with that concept because... There's I so many ways like it could get out of hand. It's more that if you give it enough strength, it might just not run Explosion. Mm-hmm. 
So pr making sure that it has a reason to run explosion would definitely be the difficult part of that concept. But again, I think it's a super cool one. I just, it could be a bit narrow just because you're focused around, because a lot of it basically says you are either huge attack or you're a normal type or you have an eight ability, you know? Right. Absolutely. Yeah, if I may steer the conversation, there was actually, um, there were two concepts that dominated a lot of conversation as well, and they were MDS's uh, Average Ordinary Everyday Hero and uh, Stonejinner Syndrome by Gekko Keso, where we had the discussion on one of them has very, very unconventional, like, one-sided spreads of stats, where one was super high, and then, you know, the other side of the stats were extremely low. Whereas MDSs talked about how can we make a Pokemon with a very near balanced stat spread of average spread stats, excuse me. And those two concepts were really one of the ones that got talked about a lot um, in that early stage of the concept submissions. All right, so with regards to MDS, the only reason I looked at it and kind of said, nah, I'm good, I'll pass, is because I viewed it this is probably very unfair of me, but I viewed it as a very, like, obvious dichotomy between results. It's either we make Clefable again, which is a mon with a powerful ability, a very, very deep pool of utility and coverage moves, and one of the best typings ever created, and then it just runs over the metagame. Or, mm. we make Malaconda, <laughs> and we know how Malaconda went. Oh no. What? What are you talking about? Malakon is a great future site switch in. <laughs> Turns out gonna... 500 base stat total sucks. Yeah, I think Nido King is like a tiny bit. The ideal. Yeah, I I think that MDS's concept weirdly is treading a lot of the similar similar points to Spoo's concept, but it's a bit less focused, which is why I didn't, which is why I preferred Spoo's over it a bit. mm Hmm. Because both of them basically imply the same stuff about your defensive stats. That is, they're mediocre. Right. And Spooz also arguably implies that about offensive stats. Because if you're making a defensive mod, it sort of implies that you aren't, you know, god of the offenses, uh, Darmanitan G, you know? Right. So i ultimately felt that there was a lot of overlap between the concepts and spoos was a, just a bit more focused and because they were both fairly broad concepts i generally favored spoos over mds's despite the fact that i really like both of them sure as for gecko castles i liked a bit more actually because i think that you know skarmory style mons have really disappeared from the tier Mm -hmm. you know how many the, the like, Pokemon that are like one sided in their stats yeah like how many dedicated physical or special walls do we have around in cap right now is it Blissey Blissey I think of Blissey and that's about it let me <laughs> yeah. sort of argue, other... like Buzzwall I guess Buzzwall, Buzzwall yeah, but... I would say yeah but that was primarily just for Urshifu yeah but like outside of like basically those two I guess Slowbro as well sort of Galar Slowking, I guess. Yeah. 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 But like, the dedicated physical or special wall archetype has just completely disappeared. And I think that's really bad. Mm. You know? My, when I saw it, I thought it was a very interesting concept because, you know, if we want to go to the Pokemon that initialized it, Stone Journer, I see that and I'm like, wow, this was clearly, you know, something happened along the way to make this unviable. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. But my first question is, when you say that it's got this very split stat focus, where does the split end? Are we talking about a Pokemon that's got, you know, one really high attacking stat and then the other one's unviable? Or are we talking about it's got, as opposed to like a super high attack stat, just a high attack stat and then the other attacking stat's usable? Mm -hmm. Are you, like, I don't know. I thought yeah. there was a lot of, like, questioning just how you even differentiate between high and low mm -hmm. right because yeah. you think about stone Jenner's attacks it's like base 100 hp base 125 attack base 135 defense and, and then base 20 for yeah, like, special attack like, special 140 ish defense and then like still somewhere between 60 and mm -hmm. 70 i think 70 
Yeah, yeah 65 so like, HP that's and still spit reasonable, out. and then you add on that steel is a broken typing, you, you still got a very coherent defensive, like, specially defensive wall. Even. I think you'd have to go all the way, because look at Melmetal. Yeah. Yeah, because Melmetal, Melmetal like, just invests Somewhere super between hard. the two, and it's still taking yeah. every hit you have and saying, yummy, thank you. Right, like, an, an Assault Vest is a very potent item, and that's, like, Melmetal barely runs it in the first place. Even just investment. It's a, HP yeah. stats, like, 12,000. Like, even, here's here's even another, like, Astrolotl. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Astro with regen plus 64 spadef, and I guess, like, with 74 defense and 64, you're not taking, like, a ton of hits. And I guess I'm sort of deviating away from the whole idea of it, but, you know, where is that min max and going is it like all in attack and special attack is it like attack and defense is it special attack and special I think defense nihilego is probably the best example of that concept in action right yeah 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 53 still and viable but not just saying okay i'm a physical wall too mm -hmm. honestly if nihilego had like earth power i would well, like fire blast i i could see it in OU. It's yeah got if it had a better way to deal with steel types because broken me meteor beam a meteor beam oh boy but yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the concept i thought was super interesting um it would be a pretty difficult concept though because like it implies like the high attack and high defense but like is mal does malaconda count i mean hang on let me look up don't bring stats. him into the conversation mm, we don't talk about malaconda funny snake we don't talk Funny about snake. the PP Stallmon. Oh, Pipcon, no. not Pipcon. No! <laughs> what else are you running on it? Its niche doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Rabia, it's a you know what's better than Rabia? That only, that it's only viable niche is being the second Droughtmon on a team. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's not man. even the second anymore, man. I'm using no, Torkoal the... plus Jumbao before I put a Malakon <laughs> on there. <laughs> Are you I'm using nine tails before I use it. Are you implying Jumbao Sun is viable? I'm not implying that it is viable, but yeah, I'm gonna have to get. Yeah, it's it's sort of a. Uh, we don't talk about Malaconda unless it's yeah, for don't. budget tour, and then it's like ah, uh, sign me, sign me up. <laughs> so one. Uh, so so I'm so I'm looking over the thread real quick, and one thing yeah. I came across that I think is really interesting but difficult is pip's concept yeah which I, I really like the idea i just think it is it, a very difficult one to conceptualize because yeah basically every stage has to have a large plus and a minus and that's very difficult because yeah. for for the listeners sorry to interrupt really yeah. quickly for, for the listeners the concept is double-edged armory where in the cat process Every stage contains a different double-edged sword, a large benefit, and a flaw. Anyway, you were saying. Yeah, so I think that's a very interesting one because, well, it's, I mean, it's similar to the one I submitted, you know? Mm. <laughs> but um, I, I thought it was very interesting just being like, can we make, I mean, Cortana is the one that's been brought up here. Where right. it's a really good defensive typing, but its defenses are sort of bad, you know? Absolutely. Its ability basically says if you kill something, you're amazing, but the Mon has really low base power moves, so you can't actually get that KO super well. It has super high attack, but again, your highest base power move is like 90, you know? Mm -hmm. And just basically, can we make a Mon where there's just some level of heavy amount of jank inherent in it? is super cool to me because I think Nihilego is even harder on this because just like you have amazing special bulk but your physical bulk is so low that like an earthquake from like I don't know probably even Bollocks would KO you you know mm -hmm. like maybe Jumbao is a better example there like a bulldoze from Jumbao is probably doing 50 to, Mo to Nihilego you know right. and then you got this four times weakness in your in your typing to ground, which is the most common coverage move, you have, you know, Meteor Beam, Stab Meteor Beam and Beast Boost, which together basically say, I get a free DD if I ever get a kill, but you don't have coverage. Right. And it's just like, 
the idea of basically how can we create a bond where every positive it has is counterbalanced by a weakness somewhere else and you're just left with this mon that is very janky but has a ton of strength nonetheless is super cool for me yeah i think it's a really neat concept as well and yeah. uh yeah uh what about you rabia spoo did you have any other concepts that you wanted to briefly touch upon as well um i really liked wolves and joes um mm. for wolves I mean, I guess both of them were concepts that were criticized as being more, like, frameworky than actual um, right. concepts, um, which I think is valid. Uh, for, what it's worth, for what it's worth, Wolf's concept is moving forward a Pokemon created by having a moveset step completed earlier in the process. Yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a valid criticism. I don't, I don't really mind. But just for Wolf's, like, it's such a huge question mark for me because we've never done anything like that at all. And I think there's a lot of room for it to just go wrong and be, like, a very awkward process. But I think there's genuinely, like, a lot to learn from it as well. And he goes pretty in-depth with that in his questions. Just because, mm -hmm. like, the moveset stage is one that kind of gets, like... I don't know. I feel like that's what breaks a lot of the caps. And just being able to figure out, like... I, I don't know. Just going more in-depth on that, I guess, was really interesting to me. It's like what that end product would look like and what we can take from that. Yeah, definitely. What about you, Rabia? Did you have another concept you liked? Yeah, so I got... I'm going to say one and a half, because the half part is Quanyalis's, mm. the breaking the mold thing. I think as a concept, it's abhorrent and does not work. <laughs> but I think as a call to action against what Cap currently does, it's very, very, very good. And stating that Cap has historically kind of just defaulted to certain like comfort zones with respect to like typings abilities and whatnot and that there should be an increased willingness to diverge from that and go against the grain and do some stuff that's just less done i like that i just right. think that as a concept it fails because that's one of the most open-ended things you could ever suggest be done yeah so, yeah that's why i think it works a lot better as a call to action say hey in the future maybe even this calf <laughs> let's <laughs> look at doing some things that we don't normally do which i think works with cutes's concept super duper well mm -hmm. in terms of the other concept derek's which i think also got put up for actual voting the boosting and blasting yeah using you know an attacking move and boosting simultaneously i think's fun because i think the idea of scale shot is just so fun i've really loved scale shot guard chomp this generation mm -hmm. and i think even like flame charge what you know smokomoto could have been with flame charge and technician like that even just sounds really fun and then even when you look at contrary pokemon you know what pokemon naturally have contrary it's superior and i even thought about this this morning and i've already forgotten the name lorantis i believe those are the only two pokemon that get contrary right? malamar malamar okay yeah doesn't matter Man, <laughs> two of these pokemon <laughs> are unviable at ou and the other one historically yeah. at ou has obviously I... been a strong pick but not a meta breaker I right, like and so I think it's because it is the jankiest mon that has ever existed. It really is. Like, but I think even <laughs> just so looking fun. at trying to contextualize another contrary mon in OU could have been interesting. Looking at mm -hmm. you know if you even want to use superior as a base for what something that's viable, strong even, but not breaking the meta, what that looks like. So you have an idea as to maybe where you'd want to put some limitations in there. I yeah. just think that'd be fun. Bring it up. Um, Lurantis's main set last gen in PU was Defog, Leaf Storm, Superpower, and Synthesis. Yeah, I really like being walled by poison types forever. <laughs> Even when I'm boosted. set that has ever existed. Because it basically says if you boost up with Leaf Storm, your Superpower is still bad. If you boost up with Superpower, your Leaf Storm is so, but still bad. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also one of the best contrary mods just because the jank inherent in that concept is so heavy that you will always have to deal with it. Yep. Yeah. And it's so bad that it's good. And Unless you go superpower knockoff and decide you're a grass type that doesn't beat water types. Hmm. You mean you decide you're literally Malamar, except for worse in every way. <laughs> Malamar <laughs> without Malamar. stab knockoff. Yeah. But with but yeah. defog. Yeah. But yeah, I think Derek's was super cool just because a lot of these strategies just aren't explored in higher tiers. Mm -hmm. As I like superior. 
You can even look at abilities like Moxie, Soul Heart, and Beast yeah. Boost as kind of being pro concept because you you know you're still yeah. attacking, but you're contingent on getting that KO for the boost. My worry is just basically that like there's a, not a lot of room for error. Like if you make superior, but it gets like I don't know mystical fire incinerate it's suddenly broken it had hp fire before it was still manageable yeah but you'd have hp fire and incinerate you know oh i see but like this kind of thing there's so little room for error because if you just give it one too many coverage moves it's only just it's, it's just suddenly boosts up forever yeah but or see like, that's the fun of picking one of those like more high potential things you gotta see okay yeah. Are we competent enough to keep things balanced in other areas? Which I think is just always a fun yeah. it's thing a challenge. to explore. <laughs> Part of my issue is just like, move pulls last and move pulls where it's going to get broken. Yeah, that might be an example of, okay, we need to reorganize stages. We do have defining moves now, which would, you know, give us that freedom to right. basically just do move some moves before stars, but yeah. It'd be yeah. a very helpful thing for something with contrary, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up by just briefly talking about uh, one last topic that I thoroughly found interesting, but also like just a really bad idea as a whole <laughs> that actually got slated. <laughs> we'll last talk about the, uh, the multi-attack concept that uh, there was a lot of pushback on it almost immediately after it made Slate. Um, and it was, uh, I'm trying to find where it got posted. I think it's on the second page of the concept submission. But it was basically a Pokemon that used multi-attack to be effective in the game. Hidden Potential by Chukaroo. Uh This Pokemon is designed to make use of multi-attack, exploring how a Hidden Power-esque move interacts with the modern meta. Um... And, like, you know, initially it's really cool because, like, oh, well, we could do a lot of cool things with that. But then we also have to consider, you know, how are we going to figure out what this move is? You know, what type is this? Because when we think about Sil Valley and, you know, Type Null for that matter, and even Arceus, like, it's very obvious what the type of their held item it is, whether it's the plate or the memory. And, like, how are we going to figure this out on this mod? Uh, and, you know... I think everyone in this call has sort of voiced their concerns with this concept, but Severe if you got, stain. yeah, if you have like a a two minute like why this is bad or why we didn't want this one, uh, by so all I means. So I can just think back to I can think back to earlier and you this gen where Sil Valley was the entire tier. And the, that was the tier. Don't forget him. Yeah, but Don't like forget your body pressing pal. There were so many games where like you look at their team, they have like their fire resist is currently like I don't know, Reggie Rock or something like that. And you're just like the fire resist is Reggie Rock, they're sort of bad against ground types, and you're just like and they have a Silver Valley, so you're just like, they're Silver Valley Water, hundred percent. No way they aren't. And you play through that game with that assumption and you let your, I don't know, your steel type die. And then it comes to the end game, and there's Sil Valley Dragon, and you're just like, I have lost the game. Good game. Let's leave. Yeah. And the fact that this kind of mon, its coverage is going to, if we made a multi-attack cap, it's, it, the optimal multi-attack would probably be uh, telegraphed at team preview. Right. And Definitely. I know for a fact that there would be multiple games where you see what their optimal multi-attack uh, typing is. Let's say they're an electric type, and for some reason they have a Rillaboom on their team. You're just like, okay, so they really just, they want to be running uh, multi-attack ice because they already have Gastron covered. And you let your, I don't you know, you're, you're running a Magnezone for some reason, you know? <laughs> You really want to help entire, out somehow. You spend the entire game, you know, keeping that fitting. alive. And then they reveal their multi-attack, like, fighting or something. And you're just like, oops, I lost. Yeah. There's The worst part about it, too, is with Hidden Power in previous generations, that move was base 70 and in Gen 7, 60 power. You could afford, potentially, a misprediction and not be cost a whole mon or the game. With multi-attack, that move is base 120 power. 
That is a very big number. <laughs> that move is not fun to try to scout around, and you still run the risk of potentially them just being some random neutral multi-attack. And it's like, okay, I still don't know what move you are, so now I have to spend another turn scouting a 120 base power move. It's just like, it and has frankly, so much room to it, get out of hand very quickly. It would be viable just because we have Tomahawk, the god of all things. Right. Yeah, I mean, my thing with it was that it would just be, like, the best lore to ever exist in the mind games would be just horrible. Like, it would be way too good at its job. Like, even if we designed it so that, like, there was only one or two multi-attacks you could feasibly run on it, it's like there'd still be that 5% of games where it's not that, and something on your team would just randomly die that lets their sweeper win. Mm -hmm. And that just sounds, like, horrible to me. Yeah. I also, I figured out what I was going to say. I also think that the process related to this, I don't really see how it's going to be that, yeah. you know, interesting slash relevant slash uh, uh, other than, hey, we've got multi-attack. Okay, do we just give this no coverage otherwise? Or, like, what's the deal here? How are we making this Pokemon? I feel like much of it would be based around forcing the player into picking a specific multi-attack or maybe having the choice of one or two viable ones. Right. And that, at that point, just sounds kind of like... Why are we not just giving this Thunderbolt or Ice Beam? Right. Just to give an just example, like, even just high one coverage moves. moves. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like, at a point, you're trying to cover so hard to make sure that what will end up just being another coverage move ends up, you know, you're just trying to turn it into that. Yeah. And you Contrary have to cater to so heavily this, into that being super strong. I think multi attack would have been a great opportunity to, run a pro to make a protein cap. Mm hmm. That like, that would have been one. really cool. Just, like, you get one move that decides your typing, and it's your best move. Figure out what to do with it. That would also completely remove the scouting element. So, like, that's really cool, and I also think, like, just the idea of how can we make a mom that gets one coverage type total would be really cool. Right. You know? Right. Like, give it, I don't know, ground stab and just be like, you get one coverage type, figure out what it is, have fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and everything else is just like, that would have given us our normal cap! Oh my god! <laughs> we can still do that. It's time for normalized multi-attack. Let's go. Just vote, Let's just vote go! For and just vote for color change so that we can abuse the fact that everyone wants a Spectria counter despite the fact Spectria won't be there by typing stage. It, it think really about it. won't. I think that's, uh, that's a pretty good coverage on uh, all these concepts. Uh, again... I want to thank my guests, uh, Spoo, Q's, and Rabia for joining me on this episode of PodCap today. Uh, we will probably have more uh, concept and process-related PodCaps for number 29. Uh, that'll be really fun to do. But uh, again, thank you all three of you for showing up, uh, ready to talk about some really interesting options and to uh, pitch yourselves. And I'm really excited to see where uh, Cap 29 goes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I am, too. Gotta win one of the stages Thanks. this time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one of these days. Imagine not making the slate. Oh, couldn't be me. Couldn't be me. I made the first slate, okay? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. good. It's good. We're all we're all part of the elite cap society, this the uh the secret the people underground. People just aren't ready for my lead to continue into the cap creation process as well. Right. We're scared. You know, you're only allowed to be handsome outside of the process. Ah, uh, so disca. Okay. Anyway, thank you all for listening. Eat. And thank you all for uh, putting up with our silly banter sometimes. And uh, we'll see you all for another episode. Until then. <laughs>